You ready? Hey, how you doing? This is Brad from Brad's Transmissions. What we're going to do in this video, this series of videos, we've got four of them for you, is go through a 350. You probably already knew that because you've clicked on this video. So we're going to take, in this first uh, part, part one, we're going to be taking the transmission apart and kind of showing you how to get everything apart right and some things to check out. So hopefully you enjoy this. Um, we'll get going here in a second. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the video get out because if this video helped you, maybe it'll help somebody else. So please hit that, hit that like and subscribe. All right, let's get on with it. Okay, like I mentioned in my intro, the, going back to the basics, this is just a 350. Um, a friend brought to me. We're going to give it an overhaul, kind of update it a little bit, make it a little bit more powerful for his vehicle. As you can see, it has been installed before or rebuilt because um, somebody has painted it. So we'll get it a little closer here and I'll show you a few things and we'll get some stuff taken off of it and start getting it apart. Okay, what we're gonna start doing is taking it, uh, getting everything off the outside of it. We'll take his kick down cable off. It's pretty hammered shape. It's got some, uh, some uh, marks right here from being worn out. We're gonna get this, uh, this out of here. Uh, a lot of the people, a lot of the problems people have is that their uh, cable will stretch out and they won't be able to properly adjust it and that'll give them fit. So if you're rebuilding it, you might as well put a new cable on it. They're really not that expensive. Get the dipstick out. Just a little o-ring on the end of it. Get that off. Set that back to the side. Now with the accumulator here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you there's a hole in the side here. Okay, if you look around the back side of this, you notice there's a little hole right in here because there's, an, there's a snap ring that holds this cover on the side of it. So what we're going to do is take a little uh, punch and you can usually just wiggle it in and get behind your snap ring and pop it right out. With the snapping out of the way, you can usually just get this out quite easily. Um, sometimes you can use a pair of pliers, sometimes you pull it out with your fingers. That's not gonna work. I'll try a little pair of pliers. Oh, it came right out. And on here is an O-ring. Get rid of that. We'll put that in there. A spring. A lot of the times this likes to break. Um, if it does, you can get a replacement for these. These are good. Uh, we'll talk about changing the setup and stuff when we go back together because some people will change these out for different springs and I'll explain that when we start putting it back together. Now right inside is an accumulator. Oh, this actually came out with my fingers. Sometimes it won't come out with your fingers and you want to get in there with a uh, pair of snap ring pliers so you grab a hold of it and pull it out without doing any damage. After you've got this out, you want to make sure there's no damage on the outside of your, of your piston here and you want to make sure there's no damage on the inside of here. You don't want any wear marks, any scuff marks. Um, if they're really, really small, you can take some Scotch-Brite and clean them up. But other than that, you want nice, clean, smooth area. Now, if you take a look at, look at this inside of here, you can see how nice and smooth this is. There's no gouges in it or anything here and right down here where these seals ride. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Then take Scotch Brite and clean it up really, really good so it's nice and clean. Take your little Scotch Brite and polish it up nice and smooth all the way around. It's nice to clean all the dirt around this edges right now. So when you clean it in the washing machine, all that stuff gets out. After that, what you want to do is take your piston and you want to take a pick very carefully and remove the Teflon rings. Some, some will be Teflon and they have another one that's kind of like, kind of like carbon, a little bit harder, but they, they split and you can just pull them right off the outside of it. It's a lot easier. 
We'll get both those off. Set this aside. After that, we're going to take our modulator out. <coughs> take your bracket and stuff, and throw it over there. This will come right out. You'll want to replace these. These like to uh, crack inside. They're just a little uh, diaphragm and it gets worn out. So I'll replace this. Um, there's an O-ring. It didn't come out with the accumulator or the modulator. And if you take a pick, you can go in and pull out and there is a valve right in the back side of it. Get this out. Make, again, make sure this is not worn out. Uh, if there's any big scrapes or scratches on it, you're going to have to maybe even replace your case because the case might be bad. You'll have to look inside to make sure, you're, make sure your bore is not bad, but very, very rare that happens. Um, looks like this is in really good shape. We'll put this in the basket and we'll take our tail housing off. Before I do anything, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rear seal off. It's a little easier when it's connected to the uh, transmission because you got the whole weight of the transmission to hold it, hold it in place. Looks like somebody decided to silicone everything, which is not a good idea because all it does is help leak. Yeah, I'll have to clean this off. It's got silicone all over it. Um, I'll roll it over here. If you notice, we got a speedometer. This is a junk. This must have been a junkyard unit because it still has some of the cables still on it. We'll take off the speed all here. Of course, that's no good. We'll get this off. Our retainers bolt and then we'll pop pop this little bullet out here speedometer bullet oh they got silicone all over that too um, th that, that's your driven gear for your speedometer they have different colors for that we'll go through at the end when we put it back together the different colors and and the different setups you can do and you can see they've got silicone all over this We'll have to clean that all up. But for right now, we'll just get the O-ring off of it. We'll set that off to the side for a pile to get cleaned after we're done. Now we'll take off the uh, tail housing. Those are usually 9 sixteenths. Our tail housing off. Uh, we'll want to put a new bushing in it. Get our O-ring off of there. Now what we got is our drive gear for our speed armor, and I'm going to show you how to get that off so you don't damage it. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to take uh, a wrench, adjustable wrench, and you're going to adjust it so it just barely fits over this. What you want to do is slightly tap it with a with a hammer. Well, we'll slowly take your gear off. Kind of came off pretty easy. Sometimes when you're doing it, the little retainer here will get stuck on the gears and you'll have to push the retainer down as you're pulling it off so you don't damage your retainer. But that's your, your drive gear and your clip. It usually does not come off that easy. We'll rotate it around. Here's your governor. We'll take the, uh, the clip off. There's just a retaining clip. A lot of, some of them have these and some of them won't. If, you, if yours doesn't have it, don't really worry about it. It's just a precaution to have on there. Um, then we'll take a screwdriver. and one, What you want to do is carefully tap this in a couple different places. Don't hit it real hard. Just nice light taps. So you don't so you don't damage the the, the lip of your uh, governor cover and go back and forth until it's all the way off. Awesome. We'll get the O-ring off. 
I want to make sure there's no damage on the sides. And what I'll do is I'll take this in my uh, wire wheel and I'll clean it all up so it's nice and smooth. Set that over for my cleaning pile. And your governor has come out. You want to make sure there's no apple coring on your gear. Sometimes this, this will wear out. It's just from old age and wear. Um, then you want to make sure, if you can look, you can see the valve going up and down. So it's, it looks like it's all loosened up. It's, it's still in pretty good shape. There's a few little scratches on here. And what I'll do is I'll take some uh, emery cloth and clean it up and I'll clean out the bore. Um, they do have a tool to ream the bore out and put a bushing in it if it is worn out to save the case. But most of them are pretty good like that. So we'll set this off to the side. All right, we'll get this leakage off. And usually it doesn't have this on it because they take that out when they R&R &R it. But because this is a junkyard unit, it's still on there. We'll keep that. Now with everything removed, there is a seal behind here that uh, I do have a tool to take out. Um, let me show that to you real quick. Okay, this is the tool that you would use to put it on it. You would put it over the top of it. You would screw it into the seal and then you'd pull it back out to get the seal off. But I know you're not gonna have that. So I'm gonna show you a different way to, to get this seal out of here. What we'll do is we'll actually take this linkage out and you, you could pull the seal out of that and put it, put it back in and not have to buy another tool. We're gonna roll it over and take the pan off. Okay, with it on its back, we're gonna take the bolts off it and get the pan off. So you see the inside. Well, somebody's actually put a magnet in there. Most 350s people don't have magnets in there, but somebody has, as you can see, it's got quite a bit of fur on it. And it looks like a little bit of water in here. That, that could just be from sitting outside. I'll set this off to the side, clean the magnet and the pan in a bit. Now, this is kind of unusual. They usually have screws. So you'd use a flathead screwdriver take the filter off but somebody's actually got bolts in here so we'll get a socket and pull the bolts off of that <laughs> pull the filter off discard that um, then we'll get our half inch back on it and we will get all the bolts out to get the pan off, or to get the valve body off. You can pull them out. And take your valve body off. Now your manual valve has this little F S clip on it. Get it off. This little S clip on it. Don't lose that because you'll need it to put it back. <laughs> I mean, you'll you'll need it to put it back together. So keep that. Um, gasket stuck on it a little bit. Oh, not too bad. We'll get it off. Um, I'm going to take this little a little clip here. To pull this 
Where's my screwdriver? Oh, come on. You can pull down your linkage for your TV cable, this little clip. Okay, and the rest of it we'll, loop, we'll leave uh, like this until we do our valve body. Clean this up a little bit. We'll take our upper plate off. Now, if you have a later one, an extremely late one that has a lockup, what you'll do is the valve body will be a little bit different and you'll have a lockup solenoid here for your torque converter. But this is not a non-lockup, which is much better transmission. <laughs> off. As you can see, the plate's black and it's got a, another plate welded on top of it here. Um, this is part of a shift kit, so we won't have to put a, we won't have to put a shift kit in this one because it's already got one installed. And right on the back side of this, there's a gasket. Yeah, and I'll put this in the cleaning pile because that's not going to come off. Now that your valve body is removed, you can uh, take a little magnet here. And there's four check balls. One, two, three, four. You'll get new ones in your kit, um, but you might as well just keep them. Some people will leave leave balls out so if you're missing balls don't worry about it for right now um, it makes it shift really really hard when you do that so I would suggest putting the balls back in it uh, take your band strut out or brand, band servo out you'll have a spring a little little cap on top of it underneath that you'll have your your uh, actual piston your pin, and then on top of that you have a little washer, so don't lose your little washer here. Make sure you keep track of everything. Um, we'll take another, there's another Teflon ring. We'll show you which way, there's a top and a bottom of this. We'll show you which way it goes when we put it back together. But take your little pick and get rid of the uh, Teflon ring that's on there. After that, what we'll want to do is we'll want to take off the parking pole holder here so we can get the rear piston out. We'll get a socket here and get this off. Get that off the side. Now, as you can see, you got a nut right here. And on this other side, you've got a clip. This one's a little loose. It's usually a little harder to get off. Um, you can usually get a screwdriver underneath it. Kind of work it back and forth. And come right out just like that, all over the floor. OK, now that I've got that out, you want to get a wrench for what size you, you've got on yours. Mine's actually a 11 16 which is quite large. They're usually um, 9 16 or a 5 8 And slowly, carefully just tap that off. You can spin the nut out of the way. And pull this shaft out. See how that's coming out now? Okay, I got the nut off. Wow, got the nut off. This will just come right out. That's your rooster comb and uh, park linkage. And let's see if this comes out. Sometimes these won't cut. Uh, see, now this one's not coming out. Right here, 
what it does is it builds up a little a little lip here from being tightened down here and moving back and forth. So what I need to do is take a file or a Dremel and kind of Dremel this little edge off right here so it, it can come out. So I'm going to do that real quick. Just take my Dremel. Carefully clean up these edges right here and ah, need to do a little bit more. You don't want to do too much, you just want to lightly do it. You just want to take the little lips off of it so you can get your shaft out. Uh, if you don't have a Dremel, just use a flat file and take a file to it and you can carefully file all the way around. This one's kind of hard to turn, so I think there's some damage. It seems... Seems like it's pretty scratched up. So I'm going to polish this really good. What I'll do is I'll stick it inside of a, a drill and then I'll sand it really really good so it's smooth and then I'll polish the uh, the hole up too and I'll kind of show you how to do that when we're prepping the case okay with your with your manual rod out you can carefully take a screwdriver right behind this little seal and get it out so you can get that seal out of there so you can change that so a lot of times people don't replace this and this is a lot of the leaks. It'll leak right here down to the pan and go around the pan. People keep on thinking it's the pan that's leaking, but it's actually the shift shaft seal that's leaking. So you're there. Let's, let's, get, it, let's get it changed out. I'll get it spun around and we'll get the pump out. Okay, now that I've got it spun around, we're going to get the bolts out of here. But first, we'll hurry and take this sieve by. It's dusty. Um, we'll hurry and get this seal out of here, same as the uh, tail housing. Nice and carefully take it out. You can use a screwdriver like I am and a hammer. Or there is some different tools you can use to get them out. I have better luck with any of these. But if you don't want that, they do have hook tools that you can try to get underneath the the, uh, the seal and pop it out. A lot of the times it won't work. They uh, poke holes through the seal. So I've had a lot better luck with my uh, trusty screwdriver and hammer. except for when I'm filming that it doesn't want to work. See? Oh, there we go. All right, seal out of the way. We'll get the pump bolt out. Oh boy, somebody's put silicone all over this. I'm going to have to put these in my clean pile. Wow. As you can see, somebody's got silicone all over it. So I'm going to have to put these in my clean pile to clean them out. Um, the factory does have these little washers. Sometimes you have to use a pair of dikes to cut them off. Um, these ones just screwed off by hand. But get all your washers off because you'll get new ones in your kit. And I'm going to put these over to my clean pile so I can clean all the silicone off of it. Now you want to get your pump out. If you notice, there is a hole here 
and a hole here which are threaded. Get a little look at that. Now if you look right there, this hole is actually threaded. There's two of them on each side of the pump, one here and one on the opposite side of it. What you want to do is install a slide hammer so you can, uh, the slide hammer threads are the same as that are in the pump. Screw that in and then you can slide hammer the pump right out. Just put it in like so. And out it comes. Great, with the pump out, I'm going to push this off to the side. And we'll turn the pump over. This is a little, little, little later one. It's actually got a bearing here. A lot of the new ones, or earlier ones, excuse me, not new ones, earlier ones, will have a um, thrust washer here, which is normal. A lot of them do. It's just the last few years they started using these, uh, these bearings, which I like a lot better. And then somebody's put a spacer to take up end play. We'll get that off. Um, these are the metal clab real rings like I was talking about on the accumulators. These are always usually always metal. Um, they have a little hook so they stay together. You can get them apart. So I'm, and undo these. There's two here and there's three down here. We'll get these off. You will get new ones in the kit, but just for just for uh, safety reasons or a precaution, I would keep these because I have got kits before where these have been broken in the kit, and I needed to use an old one to get it to work to finish my job instead of buying a whole new tra or rebuild kit just to get one of those things. Now, if you look down here, there is a uh, Teflon ring on the bottom of here. A lot of a lot of the 350s have that. Um, I always leave it on. You do not get another one in the kit, so don't take this one off. Yeah, so leave this, leave this on there if, you're, if your uh, 350 has it. Some of them do and some of them don't. Um, you don't get that in your kit. So let's just leave that alone right there. Now we'll take the uh, pump bolts off. We'll get those bolt bolts out of the way. Now the spring here is for the piston and your second gear, and your intermediate uh, clutches. You want to make sure your uh, none of your springs are broken. Uh, a later or earlier ones, excuse me will actually have separate springs that will have a, a retainer and then springs that sit on little, little nipples all the way around and you have to take all of them off and there will be a whole bunch all the way around and they're usually yellow. So if you, the earlier the one, the more springs there will be you're going to have to deal with. Um, if you want to, I would keep all of the springs separate. If you do have one that are separate, um, let me see if I've got some. Okay, I went and found some. Mine's not yellow anymore, but I've got all four of them here. That's the size for the pump. Um, then you got a green one that I believe is for the forward. And you got a blue one, which is for the direct. And you got an orange one, which is for the low and reverse. But sometimes they're all separate like this and you have to set them in. I don't know if this, I don't, don't think this will be this way, but sometimes their springs are all separate and there'll be like 35 or 40 of them around here. So if yours is that way, don't lose them and keep them separate if you need to because they're all, the di all different sizes and strengths. So keep them together. Now we'll take, we got a gasket here. 
Oh, lucky. Sometimes these really stick and they're hard to get off. Take your pump, put it over. Now you've got your pump cover here and you've got your, your pump um, housing here. You'll want to take your gears out and you want to make sure they don't have much damage to them or any damage to them. You want to make sure they're nice and smooth. They don't have any deep grooves or anything like that. These are in pretty good shape. I'm going to, I'm going to clean them up with a little scotch Bright later. You'll want to check your pump here to make sure there's no deep grooves in the side. Sometimes you'll get a nice big groove in here and it'll create a lip. You could fill a lip right here. It'll get, it'll gouge down into this. If that happens, you'll need to get a whole new pump assembly. Same thing with this. You want to check this really, really good. Make sure there's no, there's no grooves on this. You can actually see where it's been riding. It's, it's lighter and darker here and here. Um, but I can't feel it, so I'll take a little scotch Bright and I'll clean this up. Now if you look right here, you can see the band is right there. You need to push this off to the side so it disengages for this little piece of aluminum. So you need to push that up so it's not down in the, in the way. If I can put it back down a little bit. So it's not down like that. You need to make sure this is pushed up out of the way. Then after that, you can pull the drum out. Before I forget, and I almost did, there is a ring right there around that part. You'll get a new one in the kit, so we'll throw that away. Put that in the basket. <clears throat> we'll slide this over and we'll start taking our clutches out. First set of clutches are is, is uh, our intermediates. This is second gear. So we'll take these out. Take a little pick and I can get them out of here real easy. Looks like this is in pretty good shape. Not burnt. Um, and then you got a thick plate at the very, very bottom. <clears throat> you got a, a ply plate that's, or a ply wavy. You got a still clutch, still clutch. Still clutch. Got three of them. As you can see, there's no real burn marks on it. Looks like we're in good shape. Um, you'll take the wavy off. You want to kind of hold them together. Make sure that they don't have any wave to them, or they're not they're not holding to get or holding your your stills apart. These are all nice and flat. But if you can hold them up and you can see light between them when you're holding them together, that means they're warped and you'll have to replace them. Well, these set of clutches look good. We'll take that out of here. Now what you want to do next is get your band removed or moved out of the way so you can pull your drum assembly out. I'll show you what it's kind of caught on before I start pulling it out. Now if you look right here, you can see the band is right there. You need to push this off to the side so it disengages for this little piece of aluminum. So you need to push that up so it's not down in the, in the way. If I can put it back down a little bit. So it's not down like that. You need to make sure this is pushed up out of the way. Then after that, you can pull the drum out. With the band out of the way, it slides right out. If not, this part of the band is gonna catch in the case and it won't go past the, uh, the little prongs here so you won't be able to pull it out. So make sure you get that out of there. Looks like this is burnt. You can see a little mark in here. So I'm gonna replace this. Um, this is only engaged in manual second. It's the only time this band is used, but it looks like whoever you did, had it um, in their vehicle used manual second. So I'll get, a new I'll get a new band. We'll slide this off and we'll take the direct off. This is the direct drum. Um, this is the intermediate sprag here, and it looks like, you see how it's black? Oh, this one's black? This is the hardened gear. So it's actually already got some high performance stuff in it, which is really nice for the guy I'm building for, then he doesn't have to buy it. We remove our snap ring and our retainer plate, and take off our heart. This is the hardened uh, gear, so it won't wear out. It's good to have if you're doing a high performance 
overhaul on this. Uh, you want to take your roller clutches off here. This is a one-way clutch. You want to get it off carefully. Now what you have is these little rollers and springs and it allows that race to only turn one direction. Now what you need to do is hold this so you're not touching any of the rollers and shake it. If you can feel, like I can feel this one, there's one loose. If you can feel one of these rollers rolling, this is bad. It needs to be replaced. You need to be able to roll it back or shake it back and forth and not feel anything move. So I'm going to have to replace this. Now you can see where the drum's nice and shiny right here. Yeah, he had the band on a lot. Roll it over and we'll take the clutches out. These are the direct clutches. They are applied in third gear and reverse. We'll pull these out. Yeah, and you can see, I'll get these out. That these are actually starting to burn. You can see right here that they're burning. So this transmission was probably slipping. Now, if you're down a half to three quarters of a quart of fluid on these things, these will burn and you will start doing this if you're low on fluid. So it's imperative you always check your fluid. Um, uh, we have to put some stills in it too. If you see the burn mark on the stills, you know, it's that start to ripple and that's going to cause problems. So you're going to have to replace, replace your stills if they're like that. Um, oh, if it's not too bad, if it's not too bad, it's got just a little bit of a bark there. You can probably just use scotch bread on that, take it out. But since this is so bad, you, I can actually see where the metal has been rippled. So it's got hot enough to ripple the metal. So I'm going to replace these stills with new ones. Next, we're going to take the piston and springs out of this. And it looks like this is not encapsulated, so this will have separate spring or yeah, separate springs all the way around this. I'll get one of my tools. To this is an older tool I've had for a long time um, that you can use to get it apart. There's different ways. I'm going to show you three different ones on, on uh, this transmission, different kind of units that you can, uh, or spring compressors you can use. Um, none of them are cheap. If I remember right, this was like 250 bucks or $200. This is, but I bought this 30 years ago, or something like that. Okay. You want to compress it down so that holds it down and you can take your pliers and remove your snap ring that's holding it in. Okay. Take this snap ring out just like that and then release this up. You've got your, your spring holder and then you've got all your little springs. We're, we're going to keep these separate. Like I can figure out which ones are which, but it's just, it's much easier for you if you keep them separate. And what I have is a little container like this. I just throw my springs in there and keep them all separate so you know which ones go to which drum. Now I've got those separated out. Pull a piston out. Okay, there's, in here there's, there's three seals. There's an outer seal, an inner seal, and there's a mid seal inside the drum. Now when you're doing some shift kits, um, the shift kit will tell you to leave this seal out. But if, if you're not doing a shift kit and it doesn't tell you to leave this out, always put this back in no matter what anybody says. You need to put that back in. Because if your shift kit's not uh, compensating for it, you, you're going to have a little bit of a problem. Take your seals off of here. And then I'll get off to the side. Oh, before I forget, you want to take the inside of your drum for wear. 
what it'll do is you can see they actually have silver marks from the rings riding on here. You want to make sure they're smooth and it doesn't, there's no catch here. So you can see I can go up and down without catching. If you catch a little bit here, you'll have to replace your drum. Let's we'll see if we can get a little bit closer up so you can see. But with, this, with it a little closer up, you can see here, you can see where it's actually, that's where the ring rides here and here. And you can't see that one down because the angle. But if you take your pick and it catches at all there, this drum's worn out and it, it won't properly seal and you'll burn your clutches. So you need to watch that, okay? So make sure you do that. Now we'll take the, uh, the forward drum apart. We have a bearing that goes between the direct drum, which we just took apart, and this one. I'll show you what they look like when we put them, uh, the differences when we put them back together. We'll roll it over and we'll take the snap ring out. If we can get our hands to work. And of course we did. Take our clutches out. We have another wavy. This is a this is an apply plate to uh, cushion the cushion the engagement of forward gear. Clutch or er, still clutch. Still clutch. We'll take those all and separate them. And it doesn't look like this one is burnt. These aren't burnt at all. Not like the directs were. So I don't have to replace these stills. I'll just get the stills for the other one. And if you look here, this one, you can actually see the holes in it here. Those are holding the springs in. So this is, is an encapsulated um, piston and springs. So the springs won't be separate on this. I'm going to show you a different uh, spring compressor to take these springs out. Okay, what I have here is a different kind of spring compressor. It's foot operated, so you can put it on there and crush them down. Um, these are a little bit more money, so if you're not doing this for a living, you, there's no reason to buy this. The last one I'm going to show you when I put it together is my Arbor Press, and that's the only way really to go about this. Um, you put these down on here, you put a little pin in there. Then you can press this down, which moves the springs out of the way, the, the tension off the spring, and you can get your clip if your hands work. And of course, my arthritis is killing me, and it doesn't help. And we can get our snapping out just like that. Now, with our snap ring out, we've got our, our um, return springs. As you can see, these are stuck to that, so you don't have to separate these. This is the way to go. It's easier this way. And then we'll just easily pull the piston out. This only has two seals, outer and inner. There's nothing inside the drum. Get these out of the way. Now you want to inspect a couple things on this drum. The nipple right here, okay, will get ground out really uh, severely if the bushing inside the uh, output shaft is, is worn out. So if this, is, if this has got a lot of damage on it, you're gonna have to replace your drum. Um, another thing to check out is where the bearings are, or the bushings right here and up here. If you have a lot of wear on that and grooves, you're gonna have to replace your drum. Now the drums are done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the planetary setup. You can grab this ring gear. There's a washer right on top. Maybe I can get that off. Um, this is the forward planet ring gear. You want to make sure there is no gouges or no nicks in this. We'll get real close. You want to make sure there's no nicks in here from the, from the forward planet to make sure this is okay. And then I'll take this thrust washer off that goes under the ring gear. You want to check out, make sure these aren't really damaged. 
If they are, you should re really replace these. These aren't in that bad of shape. Um, but if they've got deep grooves in there, you need to clean, you need to replace these. And if they've got grooves in there, you need to check the inside where they run and make sure they don't have big grooves here. If they've got really big grooves here, you're gonna have to replace this too. So just keep that in mind. Now, to get the planet out, there's a small snap ring right here. I'll zoom in and see if I can show it to you a little bit better, but we got to get that out. Hopefully you can see this, but if you look right in here, there is a small snap ring on the output shaft that holds this planetary system in. And I've got these uh, small pair of pliers. Let's see if I can get behind here and get this out of the way. Sorry, it's probably hard to see with my hand in the way. Oh, there it came. All right, there's the snap ring we got out. After the snap ring's out, you can usually take this and wiggle this back and forth and take your forward planetary system out. Um, just like everything else, you want to check all the teeth on here to make sure there's no chips. You want to make sure that they turn nice and easy. You want to make sure there's no wobble in the gear. You want to make sure the gear doesn't wobble back and forth. Because if the gear wobbles back and forth, it's no good. You need to replace it. It needs to be nice and tight. And make sure there's no damage. There's a bearing in the bottom of here that you're not able to get out. You need to make sure that's in good shape. Okay, like I was telling you, you want to check the wobbly of your, your, your planets to make sure you know, they, they spin free, they don't, they don't feel rough or anything, but I've already, I washed this, and then I noticed this after I got done washing it, is if you look at, I don't know if you can see that very well, but see how that gear wobbles back and forth. This planetary system is bad. So we will replace this. It's just unreal. And sometimes it happens quite a bit that you don't notice this, this stuff until you get it uh, out of the washer, your washing machine. Um, always check them, but as you can see how wobbly that is. This planetary is no good, so it is going to get replaced. Then we'll take our sun gear and shell out. Got a thrust washer on the bottom of it. Same here, you want to make sure that the sun gear is locked in place. The sun gear doesn't spin in here. If the sun gear spins in here, you got to replace your shell. You want to check your teeth on the inside and on the outside down here. You want to make sure that there's no nicks, no uh, pits in it or anything. If you do, you need to replace that. After that, oh wow, this is this has got a nice high pressure, high, uh, high heavy duty setup on it. What it has is a plate that bolts down and holds the low reverse um, sprag assembly down. So we're going to get the bolts on this and take it off. There's usually just a snap ring on the outside of here that you'll take the snap ring off and then you can take that out. But this one has a high performance low reverse thing in it, which he'll be excited on it because then he doesn't have to buy one for his heavy duty. So I'll, let me get a tool for that and we'll get that apart. Well, it took me a little bit, but I got all the, the uh, bolts out. Little eight, there's eight of them. So I got those out. And what I'll do is take this plate off now. What that does is it takes place of an anti-rattle clip because the anti-rattle clip will allow this center support here to to move back and forth just a little bit, but it wears the case out. This stops it from doing that, so it's, it's a little bit better for you for uh, high performance issues so then you won't have that chatter. It's a little bit more noisy, but when you got a high performance vehicle, it really doesn't matter. So we've got this out. Now, if you look, like I said, there's a snap ring right down here. We'll grab a screwdriver. And we'll get this little snap ring 
out like that. Now, because there's no anti-rattle clip, this this will pull right out. If if you have an anti-rattle clip in there, what you'll need to do is you'll need to spin it around and smack it on the back of here with a hammer to uh, to get this out because the anti-rattle clip will hold it will hold it in place. I'll get this out, turn the case over so it can drain a little bit of the fluid out. This is what is called a center support, which is your low and reverse sprag or roller clutch. Um, you have an inner race here. You want to make sure there's no marks. You want to make sure it's flat. As you can see, it's shiny here and dull here and here. So you can see where it's been riding. If you feel a bump or a little crease right here, lip, you need to replace this. This is okay. This is nice and smooth. I'll clean that up on the lathe after. Um, I turned it over. On the bottom of it, I'm going to take the snap ring out for the roller clutch. Put that away. Now this is the, the roller clutch just like the other one. You want to make sure these are good. You want to wiggle it. If you, if you feel it wiggle inside there, you need to replace it. This is a good shape, so we're okay here. And then we want to make sure there's no damage. If, if there's damage in here, you had damage in the rest of it, and we've got to replace the, the whole thing and the whole assembly anyway. So um, get this ready to wash. Next. Snap ring. We've got your low and reverse clutch assembly here. This is for reverse and, low and manual first. They look like they're in good shape. We'll take the uh, frictions out, keep the stills, set these off to the side. Now, put those like that. now you have your rear planet and you need to do the same thing you did on, for, to the rear as you did with the front. You need to check all your gears. You need to make sure they don't wobble back and forth. You need to make sure there's no chips in them. No uh, little pits in here. You need to check all of them. Really, really good to make sure there's, not, there's nothing wrong with it. If it's in good shape, you're good to go. If not, you need to replace it. And same thing with your lower gear, your lower ring gear. There's, snap, there's a thrust or bearings front and back. And you want to check your gear here to make sure there's nothing wrong with this. Um, inside here, there's a little, uh, some of them have brass bushings in here. This has got a, a plastic one. If I can get in here with a pick and take this out, I'll get a new one in my kit. Well, in my thrust washer kit or my bushing kit, I'll get a new one. Um, like I said with the uh, with the forged drum, where is it? With the forward drum and the nipple, if this nipple's worn out, you could have a brass bushing in here. In the, in the output, cut the brass bushing out and put the plastic one in there before, and then make sure you replace this drum. All right. With that done, what I'm gonna do is I'll roll it around and I'm gonna set it up. Well, I'll set it like this for now so you can see. What I'm gonna do is there's a piston in the back and there's a spring here that we need to get out that's in the back of the piston. I've got a tool for that and I'll show you what that is. Okay, this is the tool. It sits inside the case where the clutches sit right here and this pushes down on the spring. Um, you put this in to crank it down and it'll push the spring down. You can get the snap ring out. Um, if not, you'll have to put something in the bottom of it to, a, to uh, compress this snap or this uh, spring in the back to get the snap ring out. Um, you can get a piece of uh, all thread with something on top and bottom and, and tighten the nuts and kind of compress it down so you can get it out. But I'll get this put in and kind of show you what it looks like. As you see, I've got the spring compressor in on the side. I've turned it down and it's pushing the snap or the uh, spring down. And I'll get my pliers here and hopefully, sorry you can't probably see this, 
take that snap ring out. And we'll remove this. Get that out of the way. There's the spring. Uh, like I said, sometimes if you have an older one, these springs won't be encapsulated with the retainer up top. They'll all be separate, so you have to, you'll have a uh, little ring to press the springs down, but they're not, the springs aren't encapsulated on this, so you'll have to watch it if you do. The springs that are on the bottom are usually orange, and then we'll get some air, we'll blow some air and get this out, because I can't pull it out by hand. Okay, I've got it rolled around to the back side of it. If you look, there's two holes here for the governor. This is for the rear piston and that's for the lube in the back. A little air on this. Did it pop it out? Well, it didn't want to come out. That does not want to come out. There it is. Got the piston. I'll take those three O-rings on this, or D-rings. Take these three out. Get rid of those, put this in my basket. Okay, now that we've got it apart, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it in the washer, get it all washed up. <clears throat> my uh, smaller basket here that has the bearings and stuff, I'm gonna wash it in a solvent tank. The other ones with the nuts and bolts is going to go in the washing machine. But um, let's get this washed up and then we'll start getting it back together and we'll do the valve body.